What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and we are here talking about episode five of the Halo TV show. And like always, we start off with our non-spoiler review, giving the good, the bad, and final rating. And in the second half of the video, we're going to dive into the spoiler discussion, discussing the major plot events and even either praise or rag on the overall episode itself. But before we even jump into that, we are discussing this as Halo fans, but also discussing this as fans of television and movies. So when we give our ratings, we always appreciate when people like to rag on us or agree or disagree. It's all fun and games. But we understand that we are coming at this from a very interesting perspective as longtime fans of the series, but also just as fans of sci-fi and all that stuff. But if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So let's start off with our good. And when I'm thinking about this, I did like the fact that they are diving into that dynamic of how Spartans are a mixture of human and machine. And there's that combative kind of are am i a machine am i am i a human what do you see me as when it comes to a soldier and i feel like that was kind of one of the best aspects of even the three for three games that they added in because i feel like they add that in in halo 4 halo 5 didn't even touch upon it which kind of really pissed me off and halo infinite they kind of dove back in a little bit more which was one of the best storylines that three for three had created but it felt like they actually did bring that back up to light which i was happy to see and it kind of makes a lot of connections to modern day when it comes to soldiers and how we treat soldiers versus how people depict soldiers. So I feel like it brings in that modern take to a storyline that I think is, is is honestly really good. And I think when it comes to the writing, I also thought the dialogue wasn't bad between characters and the animations I thought weren't bad. I feel like the elite got Katari looked fantastic. He's been looking great the entire time. And you got a lot of close up scenes with him in this in this episode. So the, even that didn't look bad. And normally when you get close up uh, scenes with animations, they look worse. Um, but this one actually looked pretty good. And, and it made me kind of like, wow, this guy's a tank. Um, and, 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 you know, you really want to see more of this character. Uh, but we'll get into more of that later on. But Haki, what is what was a good thing that you saw from this episode? Yeah, just so right off the bat, I mean, when you know we, we did see action in the trailer and and the action that we saw um you know in this episode although it was short i thought it was very good but it does tell me that you know if they didn't write it where the spartans did have their armor and they fought in their armor i think it could have been a lot better um but i mean the dialogue just in general the writing um as a whole is just significantly better um in this episode and just in you know this season uh than it was last season so Again, we're really only highlighting a few things because there's not a whole lot to highlight. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the writing. It's just been it's been at least a lot better uh, this season. Yeah, and Legilica, what was the good thing you felt about this episode? Um, yeah, I don't want to come off as a hater. I don't think there's a lot to highlight in this one. I think this is actually one of the worser episodes this season. But the good of this is definitely what you said. When we get to see the Covenant, and I don't want to spoil too much, but we do get to see a brute. So you get a nugget in here. The brute looked fantastic. You get to see the elite, the arbiter. He looks really good. When the Covenant is heavily involved, it even carries up this kind of the Maquis storyline a little bit like it, it it really loves seeing the Covenant in this show they have done a really good job in the animation with them and even when we talked about yeah like the jackals don't look that great but boy when the Covenant is involved this show is much better and when it's more focused and some of the dialogue too I think some characters uh really shine Cortana I think continues to have very strong dialogue um, in this show. I think she's one of the best written characters in this show, which is, you know, in the beginning, if you asked me on season one, I wouldn't believe it. But even though she looks a little bit weird, some of the dialogue, like you guys mentioned, is well written um, in this. And you know what? When you can't do action all the time, you need strong dialogue. And there are moments in this episode that you have it. I just feel like this this has like the foundation. I don't want to say foundation. Cause I don't want to come off as a hater, but I'm going to be real. The, the, the premise of what the show first, first officially was, was trying to give a, some sort of a safety net that they are a completely different universe. It allows for people to kind of create their own vision of what they wanted for Halo. Um, but it felt like what a lot of things I saw kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And, and that kind of leads me into my bed because when I look at my bed, one of the biggest things that I see right off the bat is you're breaking away of a lot of things that made the universe so great. And a lot of these characters that you have are being broken. And it, it kind of like, like from, I'll say this from two sides. From a Halo fan, 
you're destroying a lot of characters. And I know that Riz and, and Vanek are not actually blue team, but they represent blue team. So you have Vanek is supposed to be Fred, and and Riz is uh, uh, damn it, it's 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 one of the four, the shock the shotgun Spartan. I'm forgetting your name. It's gonna come up to me later on, but they represent the two Spartans of the four, and Kai, who is now missing in action, is is obviously part of that too. And and all these characters that we had from the games books to comparing to this are completely different. Now, granted, Vanek is I guess a little bit similar, but. But everyone else is like very not that far off. Maybe Riz a little bit, but Kai is off. It's not the same, right? And I feel like that's where and Chief clearly is completely different from who he is supposed to be. Yeah, that's the big and, one. And and that's kind of where it bothers me a lot. And and from a from a just a TV show fan, I mean, the problem that I find with this is that they never explain any plot like plot hole. Everything is just like magically solved. And, you know, I'm not some some movie writer or TV show writer, but. One thing that I do know is if I tell a story, I have to explain why something happens, right? If I if I teach you a lesson or I teach you like how to do, something, I'm gonna teach you how to do it in a row, in in categories or in in sequence because it makes no sense if you just oh yeah this happens here and then we are magically here with no explanation. And I feel like it's like it, it tells me that these writers don't want to tell a Halo story or they don't want to tell the story of the Fall of Reach because you have a really great story with that and you really ended the fall reach in an episode one episode it took you to do that and it kind of bothers me because it's like you have all the, the the makings of what you could do something really great right you're given the money you're given the the, the name and you don't want to use it it's like kind of it makes no sense to me it's like if you went to hbo and you said hey use the last of us uh, and make a make a last of us tv show and then they just they made a show that has nothing to do with with Joel at all. Like it's just Joel and Ellie are not even there, or they're just completely opposites. Like Ellie is some like pretty yeah, girl. Those are different though. Like, you like know those I mean? are different. If they're not involved at all, you have complete leeway. If you no, but I meant I, I meant more like if they like are they, involved and you change them. That's different. I meant more like Joel that's is just like a bitch and Ellie is just yeah. a pretty girl and it's really the the side characters that are the better characters. Like you know, yeah. it's just that would that would brutalize people who are fans of Last of Us, and we are more fans of Last of Us, and that's kind of the thing I'm trying to say here. So, yeah, yeah. I just feel like this. The bad for me is that you're breaking away from from anything that's semblance of what the sh of the game storyline or even character looks and the plot holes are just getting like gaps, and it makes there's no real explanation for anything. So, hockey, what is your bad? Yeah, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I mean, what you said is, is pretty much exactly it. I mean, the holes that um, Maki and uh, Quan have created in this entire series uh, just make no sense at all. I and mean, it makes the series, drags the series on and on and on. And it's just every time I see those two characters, especially Quan, and I'm sure the actress is, is a good actress, but again, it's her writing, and I don't think that they can save her writing. Um, there was a point where I thought she should have died in this episode, and we can get into it in the spoilers, where I thought it was a good idea for her to get killed uh, because of what, you know, she did. But um, it, it really is just, it's, you know, Maki and Quan. If you were to eliminate those, uh, you know, characters, and I know Maki is kind of intertwined, uh, you know, very, very deeply, but if you at least get rid of Quan, you know, the show would have been a lot better, but... You know, it's just, it's it's really dumb things. I, I liked Ackerson. I liked the character. I liked his writing. But now that we know that, uh, you know, and not to spoil stuff, but we knew last uh, episode that Spartans didn't have their armor. So just weird decisions for writing, uh, you know, a character like Ackerson, who I liked, and making weird decisions on it. Yeah, Angelica, what is a bad that you felt about this episode? Yeah, the plot holes. Um, let's just, it, it's the plot holes. And this is, as a Halo fan, it, it's the character changes to the main characters, right? Side characters, you have more leeway. And I, I know Mars brought up, like, you're trying to represent the, the blue team, but let's just say they're not. They're their own characters, so it doesn't bother me as much, even if they sometimes make weird decisions. But when Master Chief, you know, again, and this is not even the equipment, because they kind of wrote that in to give that excuse that he doesn't have his equipment mm -hmm. for this last few episodes. The issue I have is I don't even think they know what character they want him to be. Right. Like he's so he changes with the wind, this guy. Like we don't know, is he a cold soldier? Is he an emotional guy? And you see that in this episode, he he kind of bobs and weaves in between that throughout this episode. And and it's just 
that's the halo side of me. Now for the just the show side, they create plot holes that don't make a lot of sense. And that's the other part of it is that, okay, I'm fine. Like we've talked about multiple episodes. If you're going to change canon, it doesn't, that the, the events don't bother me as much. And if you go away from the story, it doesn't bother me as much if unless you put something in that makes sense. And if it makes sense, I can swallow it and accept it as long as the characters aren't butchered. But when you don't make a lot of sense on some of these decisions, that's where it's like, what's the point? And so that's unfortunately, you really get a big dose of that in this episode. We've kind of been seeing it happening and we've been trying to be very calm and patient, but this episode really kind of exposed some of that. So I'm interested to see how they go forward. Yeah, and with that being said, let's jump into our final verdict. And and I'm not going to be as long as I was in my, my little mini rant at the bad part, um, but I'm going to be real. I feel like I'll say this from the perspective of one as a Halo fan. As a Halo fan, I am I'm kind of annoyed. And I am. And, I, and listen, everyone has their rights to their opinions. If you're a Halo fan. I'm not going to disregard you and say that, oh, you're not a real Halo fan if you like the show. I'm not saying that because every everyone has their opinions, right? And me personally, as being a fan of the series, since the like the age of like five or six you know i've adored this series and adored the characters that they've created and i feels like the writers really don't appreciate that and they want to create their own variants of these characters which it's in my opinion is if you create your own story is one thing and you're more than welcome to do that in a what if and things like that which is what they did they created a whole new timeline okay i had a, I put up with that that's fine but you you change the characters so much that they're just not recognizable and that this episode kind of not only took the breaking of the story plot, but then you're taking away like key components that were key or pivotal to the story. And you're kind of changing it to now make it where it's like you're, these characters don't match what they would do in this situation. Um, and, and you know, like in the blue team in the games, you know, with, with, with John, with Linda, Kelly, Fred, those are the, the, I know there's more with Samuel and others, but the four, the four core four that eventually break away and they become the blue team from the games, they're like siblings and, and they were always having each other's back. There's no this innermosity like rivalry between them. It's oh it maybe it's not outside, but but then you see like char- some things happen to characters and then you know Chief is like, Yeah, he's he hurts a little bit, but he's fine. Like that, that's not that's not what would happen, right? But then I'm looking at this as a as a fan of sci fi. It just this show doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense like it just they don't explain anything, and it feels like they're just kind of just following the mood, not actually having a point. And because of that, this episode kind of hurts because last episode did a very good job for relative. Even I thought this was a good last episode was a good one. This one kind of takes a lot of the things they did. Not saying that the overall episode didn't have good feelings, but by the end, the last like 15 minutes, they destroyed and every every progress they made in the last few episodes. And then that's kind of the, the bothering part. For me. It was like, yeah, I can put up with some things, but then they kind of just like, it just kind of ruined a lot of stuff. And it just kind of makes, it makes you annoyed as a fan of sci-fi and a fan of Halo. But just, it just makes no sense to me. So for me, I'm going to give this episode a six. I mean, I'm giving that's a, that's a lenient six. I think I could give a go to a five and I'd be okay with it. But this is a six for me because it just, the plot holes are just getting way too big. And the, even for like a writing standpoint, it just doesn't, they're making no sense with some of the choices they're making. So I, I'm going for a six, but Haki, what is your rating for this? Yeah, so I, I think agree with you. It's a step back from last week. I have it at a 6.5. Um, since season one, I've felt disrespected as a Halo fan. Um, and some of that residual effect happened, you know, in the beginning of the season. It did get better, but uh, to me, this is still just not master chief um i don't think they can save the character master chief unless something miraculous happens um you know the writing is better but uh, i don't really know what else they can do to to kind of save this the one shining thing in this episode was probably you know the the elite that we saw with with maki and angelica had had said it i kind of brought maki's character up a little bit their dialogue was actually pretty good but um, just some of the low points of the episode with with Quan and even some of Soren's storyline as well just got a little stale for me. So I, I got it at a six five. I mean, you know, we're gonna go into it at the end of the episode. It looks like maybe the next couple episodes might be pretty cool, but um, I've been excited before and have gotten let down. So I got it at a six five. Angelica, what is your rating here? Yeah, I think you guys are being kind. I'm at a five. I think this is average. 
Um, it's tied for the worst episode of this year. I think with episode two, I had it at five. Um, you know, again, don't want to spoil too much, but the, the fall of Reach is very short. Um, which I know I got Halo fans saying, well, in the books, it only lasts seven chapters. Well, this is the, this is what the shows were supposed to be about, right? Like you're supposed, you, that's the leeway that you could tell your stories about what happens on Reach, but we decide not to do that, right? Like we dive into things that no one cares about, but the things that we do care about, that's where we don't want to take a full dive into, you know, create fun stories with. But I, you know, I'm at a five. Um, and again, listen, I'm very appreciative of our viewers. If they disagree with us, tell us why in the comments. And, and I'm more than happy to hear your reasons. But I got to say this, though. Can we all agree as the entire community, sci-fi, Halo fans who love this show, if we get to season three and it gets greenlit and he is on the Halo ring, if he's not in his armor in a combat zone for 75 plus percent of that, can we then agree that this is ridiculous? Yeah. Like this is beyond ridiculous that he's not geared up can we at least just agree there that if he does get onto that ring and season three days ago he should be in full gear it's like they're charging by the minute that he has to wear and the spartans have to wear equipment that's why they have to write it off but well, i'm out of fun maybe <laughs> i'll jump into the, i'll jump into my spoiler section for this for that rant um but if you are you excited for the rest of the season i know that we're kind of past that halfway point uh, we're at the second tail end of this, this, of this show left. of this of the season, and you know, are you excited? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you think we're a little outrageous with some of our takes? You can also let us know in the comments below. Um, if you think we're haters, go ahead, let us know in the comments below. Um, but if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for the channel. We are now going to head into our yeah. Let us know why you think that we're nuts. But we're going to jump into our spoiler section now. So we'll see you there. So in the spoiler section, I, I, I almost want to do the equivalent of taking an open cheek dump on this show at this point. But, you know, I, I want to <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to keep my pants on for right now and, and kind of go through a little bit of the plot points and, and discuss some things that I liked and disliked as we went through. And we're going to have a good discussion about it. Um, the, I got to say, before we even jump into that relatively the pacing of this episode was pretty good for 60 percent of it and then it kind of just tumbled down the hill right i feel like because of the fact that you built in that quan i know I, we all hate quan but quan the story dumb story that they were doing now met with chief and them meant that i didn't have to jump to other sides of the planets hey, in the listen, galaxy. i might disagree with you guys here mars that you keep going I actually think Quan wasn't the worst in this episode. She wasn't, and that's and that. Well, well, and now my one of my arguments I'll is that when later, Quan but... is, yeah, when Quan is the voice of reason, is pretty bad. Like that when then she's the voice of reason, that is a bad sign for the writing, guys. Like I mean, and we're gonna talk about which part, which part I'm talking about, but but I'll start off with the fight scene in the beginning with the brood, and I'm glad that to see that they they did pick up right from the last episode, and they didn't do this thing where Chief was like invincible, that like he heals immediately and. Like he was like he was like Jesus and can float and fly through space or anything like Leia. Um, that they did that he was hurting, and they were fighting a brute. Great scene with that. But one thing I was kind of like dumbfounded, and I was I was walking at the gym when when watching this. And I think I almost fell off the treadmill when I did see the scene. Was Riz was going full badass mode, which is cool, but she jumps in the fire. Right, basically goes to grab Vanek's body. Come on, tell who saves. Tell the audience who saved. Well, saves. well sure basically, it already, was it was Quan. Them? It was Quan that went to save them with with <laughs> Soren's wife, and Quan's holding up a damn turret gun like George from Reach. <laughs> like George from Reach. <laughs> like straight up clapping every every alien <laughs> any I think I've ever seen. Straight up machine gun clapping everybody. So then when Riz jumps in head first, which I thought was dumb, because I'm like, I get it. You want to save his body, but like, I was like, she she was killing mad people, but. No point did Soren or Quan with her turret gun fire a damn bullet when she jumped in there. Yeah, she's kind of like she's fireman carrying. She's like carrying his yeah. ass over all the thing, and then not even firing bullets. They only until she gets to like she gets shot. Do they That's start cool. firing bullets again? Yeah. Like, you're telling me why couldn't they be like I need to get Vanek and, get and then the and then Soren and the Quan like all right let's go let's help her out. And they jump off and and then they like they all they could do some epic scenes with them like yeah. killing mad people and Riz picks them up. But the reason why is because they set up because Riz gets shot, he's basically dying, and and now they gotta save her. And and now all of a sudden, Chief is passed out for two days. He wakes up, you know. Halsey talks about the fall of Reach and everything's happening, and he's like, "Hey, how many? Where's the Spartan teams? Can you tell me what's going on?" And she just says nothing. She just looks at him, and, and what it assumes is they're all they're all dead. 
So that's that's they already say one thing. nothing. She yeah, said no, nothing. No response, nothing. And then she has to put him into another coma for three days. So for the first 10 minutes, Chief's been out for five days, basically. And and we all, all we do know is that Reach is gone. Reach is already poof, disappeared. Blast. And so so when you measure the amount of minutes that we were on Reach, it was a total of seven, right? So we have the one episode, the fall of Reach was a total of 70, ep- uh, 70 minutes. That's what yeah. the total was in, if I was calculating it. From one episode where the actual conflict happens to the first 10 minutes of this next episode. So, wow. The, the, the fall of Reach lasted 70 minutes and compared to what you said seven chapters in the book that's that is that is a very big difference i guess they they said hey 10 minutes per chapter i guess that's what they, they were saying um, yeah and but like there are people defending like it's only seven chapters out of 40 you know like they don't the book doesn't go that long into it I mean, these are the reasons for shows that's, that's the, the we reason want to, we want to see more like that the whole sci-fi action that's what the, we want the to whole see point, sci-fi action the point of reach falling is like is because it's so important to like the story and it's so important because then you can show why don't you like why didn't you give like i know cobalt team gets clapped in behind the scenes but why didn't you give these other spartans like give yes. them a little more life and like let us see Please. the spartans like how about it's you know what's reach. crazy you know, I, I mean i'm not a writer i don't go to colleges for writing but one of the things i always knew about when good storytelling was show don't tell so why don't you show us all the Spartans die? Why don't you show us like teams of Spartans in their in their suits? How about we put them in suits, right, with the Spartan suits, and you get them killed? You, so essentially, what they did because they all have suits, and they it was it was like, hey, they, we killed a lot of elites with with no suits on. They're like, I had my suit. This is game over. You make the Covenant look so weak, like that, you know, like that. Oh, if they had their suits, then this would have been a problem. Like that was the problem with that story plot for you was that you basically made it where yes we save money not having him in a suit but at the same time you also make it where like the covenant looks weaker because they get they can only kill them with no suits on like versus if they had suits on and you still kill vanik you still kill these other spartans and it's like damn the covenant's mad strong like you killed cobalt team there yeah in the but suits. Anderson had to take them for 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 no brain. for no reason Zero. i mean he and, and we he, don't even learn did he take all the spartans gear or just silver teams? No, he definitely did. He definitely took all their gear. I mean, that's what that's. What I mean, like all the other Spartans that we don't oh, know. He definitely did. No one won't, because no one won't say anything. So no one talks. Because no one knows yeah. how to say a conversation. I mean, Vanek's the only one that said anything about suits, and, and that was it. I mean, so the whole reason why is that so Riz gets really hurt, she needs surgery, um, and now they go to this outer world to basically go and try to get her fixed, and as, as well as apparently Kessler's gone missing. I mean, well, the I, mean I know that he was guy. on the transport and yeah, I know he was taken, that planet. Yeah. but at the same yeah. time, I'm also going to like look at Quan side-eyed. Like, so you decided to put him on a transport, not know where the hell he's going, who he's going to go with, and you're just going to go save them up. You could have had Kessler sit on the side and had you do that whole scene where you killed everybody and, and, Five, wait outside. Five point five seconds. Yeah, wait outside while you keep tapping, tapping the hey, room, <laughs> keep tapping the thing, and kill everybody. And you could have then brought him in with you guys. Like, that's why I, I I thought that was what would happen. I didn't know that Kessler was sent on his own because I probably would have brought that up in the last episode, the last video, and crapped on them for doing that in the writing because it makes no sense. Why would you do that to protect my son, Quan? Oh, okay, I'll send him off by himself, and yeah. then he gets abducted. That's a great idea, Quan. Good for you, pal. Great job. I mean, and so the reason why I'm ragging on this is because when Chief, so Quan is outside with Chief and or John, John Booty Ass, whatever you want to call him now, Master Cheeks, and Quan says, "Hey, you know, like, you know, we should bury Vanek, right?" And the scene before, John didn't want to see him because he's a dead body. He's like, "My friend's no longer here," and it was kind of sound like a douche. And then he, she's like, "We should bury him." He's like, "No, I'm not burying him. My friend's not here anymore." My friend's gone. Spartans, you know, he's 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 done his part, whatever. And I, 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 part of me is like, yes, maybe he's dealing with death and he doesn't know how to deal with that. And maybe that's what he's being a douche. But I was so infi- like, infuriated when when hearing these lines because I was like, Master Chief, to to him, these are like his siblings. And in the story, when one of his siblings, Samuel, who was a part of Blue Team, dies before Reach falls. 
it changed him as a person as in he became a machine because of that that's the whole story of the game was that he was a machine because he didn't want to see his loved ones die so i thought to myself hey you know if you're if if silver team dies in front of him i thought he would become more of a machine but i wouldn't think of him like not pay respects to his boy vanek right but i i understand they try to i know they, they rectify that at the end a little, little middle middle part of the show with the speech but still it's just kind of like you're this writing is all over the place man it's all over the place for, for master Chief. Yeah, J- john john became a light character in the first episode to a hated character in the middle to, to hoping that he would be back to who he's supposed to be at the end of the first season to somewhat likable in the first part to liked in the last episode to then hate it again it's like you're who, who am i supposed to look at when i look at john who is he is he supposed to be a villain like as if that's who he is and uh, is he an anti-hero like because he doesn't really come off as any character that i know of of master chief he doesn't come off as that um like he was super emotional last season but now he's what he's he's emotional like only giving orders to Not people. At all. You know what I mean? Like that's it's just it kind of like yeah. it doesn't make sense to me. But um I mean then we get Maki, right? Because then the first Maki Arbiter scene I thought was pretty good. They had a lot of in-betweens. Maki was basically like, you know, we find out that that Arbiter, this this is officially an Arbiter, because it says Arbiter is, you know, <laughs> as, yeah, finally we, we can confirm only only three episodes left, or two episodes three episodes left, I think, right? And we finally confirm he's an arbor. Okay, great. Now the only way he can redeem himself was to kill Chief and to bring his head to the hierarchs, right? And so apparently he's constantly annoyed that every time he's about to accomplish his deed, Maki says no. He clapped them cheeks real good. I can't kill him yet. We gotta wait. And he gets pissed off even more every time. And it's kind of like the only reason why I'm like okay with this is because he was showing that like, like I will destroy you if i get the chance and you keep telling me that this is i can't do this i will destroy you and it's almost like i was like he's like talking to us like thank you thank you Katari. i really appreciate it thank you you should do that please do that for us but what i liked about it was because it shows you like the dynamic of like yes i don't i don't look at you as some like amazing like you're not yeah you're used you're useful to us right now but that's that's it right and then once they have the cortana chip that's where the best part comes in because now you have maki and cortana have their conversation where maki's basically saying like hey you know if they don't if we're not useful then they'll wipe us out and she wants to get the memories of john so you can use that as a means to try to justify that hey he has memories of the ring we can use him to get to the ring blah blah blah. but cortana is like clapping back she says no you can't have these memories these are these are not yours and then she even uses um like saying healy they like talk back like you don't own me like and says back and like that was a good like Cortana Cortana yeah. has the least screen time of this entire season and has the best, and she's the best one she's best the best character. one it's like kind of crazy to me because it's like your writing for her is great but you don't even want to show her at all like it just makes no sense to me like why is it that's the point? and then that's the halfway point. that's where we get to the halfway so there are some decent scenes, but at the same time, there are some story plots that are just mind-numbingly dumb that you keep adding or fueling to the fire, which make no sense because, like I said in the previous segment, you know, as a Halo fan, I'm like, I'm like, I'm pissed off. But as a fan of TV shows and just like understanding story writing, I'm like, a lot of things you're doing just don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense of why, why Ackerson would take everyone's armor if he wants to protect try to save people's lives or why is it that chief is just like nah i don't really care about this guy like i don't want to bury well, his body there's there's so much to dive into right so first scene you know with the save i mean that was a good scene i know people and it does like why would riz go after that body they talk about we leave no spartan behind type of thing um, and then when we get there and she wakes up the first time and has a conversation with Halsey, right? And he gets like emotional. Like this is the part where it's the twisting. He like, look at Riz, right? What do you see there? Do you see a machine? Do you see a, you know, a, do you see a human? Do you see a weapon? You know, like, and he's getting into Halsey's like face, right? Get him all emotion. <laughs> then you, what you just said. Then Quan brings him into the other room and he's like, that's just a body. My friend's got not in here, right? Like 
it's like who who is this guy? Like if he's say, like who is he? That's the issue that I just can't comprehend. And then when we get to the Maki and the Arbor scene, it was very good dialogue, but then they also reveal other things like the only reason that she's alive is because of him, the Arbor. He says that in that in that dialogue and it's like how this is the palpatine star wars somehow maki is alive and we still don't know how you don't know the real we reason. don't know how but we do know that she's on this mission because of the arbiter who has to get redeemed right based on the story our lore is arbiters have to get redeemed and his mission is either to kill the demon or get the two sacred symbols that they have one of them so like, but then they're saying it was a mission failure. So my thought is, okay, if they have trying to get information on the second part or that they didn't kill Chief, why would he listen if that was what he had to get redeemed was to kill Chief? That's the part that still doesn't make sense that Maki held it like, he hasn't answered that question. <laughs> the only reason is obviously because she loves him. But like, dude, like, that's like the most obvious one, but she's not giving a reason to any of like the Arbiter why this can't be achieved and that's the kind of those plot points that just it's mind-numbing it's, it's mind-numbing yeah hockey what do you what do you think Ben, about this first half yeah i mean i, I thought that first season uh excuse me that that first scene uh was very good uh, i thought you know the brute looked awesome even the gunfire off the brute's armor i thought you know that that little detail looked uh pretty awesome and again if you know if that story uh writing for Ackerson wasn't there we probably would have seen a much you know, a uh, better battle between Spartans in their natural habitat, in their uniforms versus, you know, the Covenant. So again, it could have been better, but it's probably the best part of the episode. Um, you know, Quan, you guys said it wasn't, she wasn't the worst part of this episode. She wasn't, but I, I still didn't like how she was so obsessed with, you know, uh, burying Vanek. I thought maybe Halsey should have maybe had that conversation or should have had more of a conversation. With well, Thomas. no, Halsey, uh, Halsey's actually well, She's cold. She doesn't care. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that makes sense. Quan is, like, because she didn't bury her family. Oh, yeah. Like, that's haunting her. Right? I guess it's just, like, it was super annoying. And that wasn't even even worse than the Chief's flip-flopping Oh, yeah, yeah. So character. The, the the writing from Chief is, is almost the same as his first season. It's it's very hot, hot and cold, you know? Um, but uh, even the, uh, you can kind of... Uh, see the relationship between Maki and um, uh, Cortana yeah. as well. It, it's oh, yeah. kind of developing a little bit. Um, you know, and, and Maki asked, you know, Cortana, you know, what is cheap to you? You know, because she was getting a little tingly, you know. But, <laughs> um, you know, it just, it, it could be so much better. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I'm a little disappointed just in general. Yeah, and uh, let's jump into our second half. And uh, it's not going to be as long because th- there was a lot more I guess you would say heated moments, but they, they are all kind of in the same scenes. They're, they were not really smaller scenes. So then Riz like, obviously gets her surgery, and then Halsey tells her, "Hey, you just gotta work hard, and you'll uh, you'll get you'll get better, Chief. Don't worry, you'll you'll get better, bud. You're diminished, uh, but you can yeah, get better. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll get better. You'll get better. Um, and then at the same time, then we get this is where the pacing kind of gets out of whack because then we get to the negotiating with random like random people over for Kessler, right? And this is my favorite part where. <laughs> Where we go oh and negotiate for these for this kid, who who what's funny is they find out that uh, you no know, they find they go to that that merchant guy to go like find out like where you know Kessler is. No real indication that this is Kessler. They just know that hey, there's a kid. Oh, his name. They fudge his name. That's they fudge. His, they, yeah, they see the, his name there. They think that's him. They fudge. Yeah. He's got an element. They fudge his name, whatever. And, and those two parents, those two people, are just like, oh, we're hell bent on like. We're gonna murder you if you even come near a house and stuff like that. And I, the only thing I liked about the scene is that Soren's talk with them was the best part. And it was kind of like he, you could tell that he played them in the beginning. And then when they said, oh no, we're not selling him, then he's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you know, my life was way worse than this one. And, uh, you know, we scrapped and we fought for everything we wanted. And, you know, we, 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 we didn't have anything. So we can't, we cherish people. And, and, you know, you guys definitely would give my son a better life, but I'm still his dad, and I still want my son back. And I thought, Soren's about to do some dirty things. Yeah. And what? And what do they do? They cut away. It's just like, just like you know, 
Show us what happened. Yeah, show us. Give Bobby, me. I just said no. You can you can go see him. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. You can go uh, see him. Uh, what time you want to go see him? Uh, like, is it? That's really what the whole scene basically hidden behind the scenes was. And at the same time, his wife goes and goes to go find the kid, and it's just a random black kid. And you're just like, what? So this whole emotional that's scene the, playing that's out in the back, you're like, oh, something's kid. about to go down. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Something's about to go down, and it's a random nothing. kid. <laughs> for nothing. And you're like, that's so dumb. That is to what? To cause tense? It's Oh, it's not a son. You got to go find him again. Da-da. Like, oh my, oh my God. Like, this whole cat. Tesla. Kessler missing scene should this whole storyline should have been one one episode because what's the point of dragging this out? It's what Soren needs to find his feelings and be a better husband. Like okay, no, that's you, okay, that's okay. You gotta, you gotta How about this? You got one episode. More. He did his whole he did that whole speech and showed that he loves his son, he cares about his son, but he's just a common collected guy. Like that's what he is, right? And they show that with that speech that he still loves his son. He still wants to care for his son. Like you could have done that in, in one episode and then found his son and that was it. But no, they gotta continue that because that matters more than reach. That that will have more screen time than the fall of reach, which makes zero sense. And then we at the same time we then we get the funeral scene, which I generally didn't mind Chief's speech when he was giving this one because it kind of rectified, at least made me feel a little bit better about that whole dumb scene of him just being a douche. Where he was just saying, oh, he means nothing. But then he straight up says, you know, um, I didn't know him as as like who he was as a child. Like, I, I only knew him as like the Vanek 034. Um, and it was just like, I mean, I know 134, not 034. And, you know, it means like, yes, he is my brother. I can know that he's lost and he's gone, but he'll still be what he is as always as a warrior. And, and I like that. Speech. It was a good speech. It was just kind of like to me. I felt like they could have written Chief better, that he could have been very, like, didn't want to talk about what his feelings were, that Vanek has gone to Quan in the beginning. That's okay, because that makes sense. But to be like, no, my friend's not here anymore. I don't see his body. Like, you see bodies all the time, Paul. Like, you, you kill people. Like, you you are a soldier. Like, you you saw this stuff all I, the time. I was fine to be the soldier, just then the emotional stuff comes after. It's just, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, he goes, look at, look at Riz, look at her, look at her right now, and then say, I, I can't look at him. He's not, he's not there. He's not here anymore. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I, I just think that this has kind of just been all over the place, but the last 10, 15 minutes made me want to puke. I'm sorry, but that, this bothered me. The worst we have the Maki Arbors. And this one bothered me a lot because... Maki convinced because I thought the Arbiter was going to destroy her, which I knew he wasn't, but he was ready to kill her at a certain point because he was saying she was basically revealing that the hierarchs are lying to you. She's doing the Arbiter scene to like to, to Tartarus, right? We're like trying to reveal to him the, ar- the hierarchs are lying to you. You don't know what's actually going on. Like she knows everything. Like what is going on? What is what is happening? And we're getting to the, we're escalating this story to that point where all of a sudden now there's the vision of the ring and it's Cortana worked with Maki to show one of the visions that Chief had of the ring itself. And all of a sudden, Guitari is like, uh, all right, so what do we need to do? And Maki says, we need to go to the ring. You need to believe in me. Yeah, you need to believe we in me. We need to do a, our, yeah, our thing. And they leave after being summoned back to high charity. And he's like, well, they'll come after us. They'll set the fleet out of us. You have to believe in me. And all it does is it confirms to me that Qatari is going to die in a dumb way and it's going to it's just going to piss me off. My my own, my only hope is that Maki just goes down with the ship. I just she needs to go. She this is a story with her is just getting she she's becoming the the plot killer. Like it's almost like she has become the arbiter of murdering plots for this story. I feel like she's she's doing things to just change the framework of the story itself. I thought, hey, if you know what, you want to make Arbiter like a very interesting character, you could have made it where Maki's a good guy. You could have made it where Maki tries to save John's life by sacrificing herself. And then basically then you can play out the rest of Arbiter's story where he's he's think he's he thinks he's doing this for the right reasons for himself, and he gets he gets scarred as somebody needs redemption, and then you could have done a whole story with that. Or you could have had him kill them, have an actual, like, the Valve Badam come in and do all that story. But this tells me that they have no care 
no inkling of what that that actual story is at this point and they're using maki because now like we get to the we get to the final part and it's riz retires she wants to stay in this planet which she is apparently best friends with everybody now and she becomes one of the the people getting carried off like and stuff and john's like on your feet soldier you're coming with me and then she's like <laughs> no i'm not and then you know and uh, i mean you're granted I yeah it's <laughs> It's messed up, but at the same time, it's kind of just like, damn, like, well, we just lost two characters essentially in in two in one one and ten minute episode. Um, in 70 minutes, we lost two characters. And here, here goes Kai. Last scene, Kai is now leading this new brigade of Spartan threes. It just doesn't make it just like Kai was supposed Don't forget to be that Soren and his wife find out that the UNSC took Kessler. Yeah. No, that's, um, that's going with the last part. Yeah. And that Chief and Halsey have that talk, and Chief's like, and she's like, you, you're gonna go hunt Ackerson and and Pargotsky or Parangotsky, who actually is the ringleader. We forgot to mention she's in yeah. charge, not Ackerson. Not Ackerson. Yeah, she's in charge, and that yeah. Chief is gonna go hunt her, hunt them down. And she's like, you, you can't go unnoticed. And he's like, I'm already dead. So we're getting this. That last was all in the same window. Yeah. It was like mine. <laughs> um, so which where do we go? Which one do you want to talk the, about? The first? writers in their in the yeah. writing room. Which one do you want to talk about? I know what to say here. I know what to say here. Just say I'm already dead and, oh. and just like that oh. will clear that, that will was fix everything. To, that, was, that was supposed that, to make me that was that was cool. You know, like that that mainly gets me going. But like it just it doesn't make sense to me that we're doing these plots the way it is. Because now we go from the covenant going to wipe out the human race. So now the Covenant's gonna go chase after Maki while Chief is gonna go hunt down Ackerson and the UNSC. <laughs> what is the point of this? What is the point? All the war, everyone. All yeah, the like, war. The Covenant yeah. are wiping out the human colonies. The most important colony that we had just got wiped out. We need to go fight. We need to go fight Ackerson. We need to go get Paragas. Like, or the Covenant. We need to go find this icon. Let's go get Maki and the Arbiter for some dumb reason. Let's just go after them because they're gonna they're gonna like be the things that we have to take care of. Like at the end of the day, like it's just this this episode. The reason why I'm so heated is because this derailed everything. Like I thought, hey, the main mission of this season was to do the Fall of Reach, and you, and in two episodes you derailed that entire thing. The entire all the trailers we got, all the things we had, Fall of Reach was the back. That backdrop and what you do you ended it in one episode and then you took us on some dumb other side missions that make no sense like i'm sorry like kai is supposed to be linda from blue team or well, what was it wasn't kai talking about how these bards are their her brothers and sisters and they're never gonna turn their back on them and then what does she do she turns their back on them like in a in a matter of there's no indication of why she did this there's no reason there's like yeah Chief lied to you. Oh, did, did Vanny lie gonna, to you? I did Riz score, lie to you? Or? No, like, I'm just saying, dude. <laughs> I, thought, it's just, I thought Kai was supposed to be, you know, Chief's, like, right-hand girl, like, right-hand man. It, it seemed like they had, like, the tightest relationship. You know, I, I know they're Spartans, but, you know, I, I don't really know. I, I think, I don't know what you guys think, but I think Master Chief's going to fight have a little duel with Kai. I don't know if that's a if that's a what plot shot No, man. Kwan, I mean, Kwan's gonna Kwan's gonna clap is gonna clap her. Don't worry, she's got the turret gun. Don't worry, she's got she's got the turret <laughs> gun. But then we we didn't even because of all those plots, we didn't even mention Quan at the funeral being haunted by an old oh, woman. Just on PC Quan was smoking PC. <laughs> she's she's just on and like, even Riz was bugging. looking at her like, yo, this girl bugging. Bugging dude. <laughs> She's like dude, well, around, like, talking to herself. Dude, and, like, I just they're like telling you the last the, the protector. Yeah, the protector. But she couldn't protect Sword's kid. She leaves him to go on. Couldn't protect Madripoor or the people. But they keep doing this. You're the protector to find your purpose. Protector of what? Dude, there's so much to go in with this whole. Parangotsky apparently is in charge of Ackerson. Which we kind of, she knew she was involved. I didn't know she was in charge still. Yeah. So then what makes this whole decision with Cortana and the, the suits make even less sense is to put Parangoski in charge. If Ackerson, people were selling me that Ackerson hates the Spartans, Spartan 2 so much that he sabotaged them. So then what is Parangoski being in charge? What is her oh. 
<laughs> what is her <laughs> angle? So and, you know, and Halsey was like, Halsey tried to explain it to the audience, to me. <laughs> and like, this is not personal. This is not personal. Oh, this no. is about control. What's control? Halsey was in prison. Parangoski had control of the Spartans. It was Chief who was going crazy, but then you find out he wasn't crazy. So when you found out he wasn't crazy, guess what you should do? Reel him back in as your top soldier and your top asset. Yeah. Like you had control. And then Cortana, what does that have to do with control? You left your most important asset on reach. So like So did they do it on purpose though? Did did, did, that's did what, they're that's saying that? That's what, that's what, that's what, what they're saying. This was planned. Like, so, so that so they can I, pretend that the Spartan twos let the world down, let let humanity down, and they can introduce the Spartan threes. Probably no, that's, you know it is no, it that's is. That's what Frank. they're gonna go with. This is like the conspiracy theory, the conspiracy theory, the uh, false flag operation. This is Paragoski wants the Spartan twos to die honorably, and then say you need to join the Spartan three program because that's yeah. that will save us all. Give them Cortana, where it shows where the ring is, and that she has information on where the other sacred symbol is on the on the planet, on the planet, so we can get the 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 masses riled up. That you know, makes, and we know she knows she was on the planet because she took it, her Cortana out of Chief's head, Chief, which Chief yeah. on the Chief flatlining. Still was able to see that that Parangoski took what? Cortana out, oh, yeah. and that she said, "You have to save him." Well, what do you do for me? And then to leave her to go on to the elite to get captured. The uh, one thing I will say is that what it feels like with this writing, and like I said, you, anyone that's watching can have their their opinions. They can comment, let us know what they think. But one thing I will say is that these writers are trying to do. They're trying to get that <sighs> moment. They want you to. Yeah. Oh my God! Talking what's gonna happen next? And and I'm sorry. I see people online that are like, "This episode got me hyped for the next episode." I don't. I don't feel hyped. I understand because people are like, "Oh, well, now it sets up story arcs where it's like Maki Arbiter versus the Covenant and Chief and Soren versus versus UNSC. This could get interesting." But I just don't feel interested because it doesn't make sense. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, okay, ca capturing Kessler for the Spartan 3 program. I thought or Ackerson was angry that they took his sister and turned her into a Spartan and Spartan. she that died in augmentation. Isn't that yeah. what the, his old backstory was on? So what is he going to do? do? I'm going to go get kids. I'm going to do the same thing and they're going to die. And then it's the same But process. I'm going to be the Halsey. Is but that I'm what the angle is? I'm, I'm, like, what's the like, point? Halsey now. There's no, that doesn't make sense to his character. Like, it the doesn't make sense to his character. And, and then, like, the whole, like, Art like the Maki Arbiter thing. Like, what is Maki? Maki's Ma, what's going to happen is and this is where I'm going to get really angry when the Arbiter dies and he finds out that she's just doing it for her for her tits. Like she just wants like she's only doing it to save John so that he doesn't die. Like, and then he finds out like this is not because of the Holy Ring. This is because you just don't want to kill him. Like, that's what this is about. And then he gets clapped because of it. That's going to piss me off. Like I'm going to get angry about that because it's like it's just going to be so dumb. It's going to be so dumb. And they've now, the only thing it. I can see would save this, bro. And just hear me out, guys. This is pretty low. But if the real Arbiter, the real Arbiter character is the one haunting Maki as a general, not as Arbiter, like the, the Halo lore guy hunting this Arbiter and Maki. Because no offense, we're supposed to believe that they're going to pause this war. They're, the war is going on in the background. And we're going to see Master Chief and Soren, for those who seen, don't see in the trailer, Next episode, Master Chief and Soren infiltrating the UNSC to save Kessler. And I'm guessing on the other end, it is going to be Quan finding this old woman and Maki and the Arbiter getting hunted by Covenant fleet. That's what we're, well, that's, we'll see, that's man. what we're talking about. That's the episode. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see. But with that being said, I feel like this is a good closing point out for us. But if, if you think we're crazy, let us know what you think in the comments below. If you agree with some of the things we said, do the same thing. We like to hear people's opinions about what they're feeling about the show, if they like it, if they don't like it. We'd love to hear your opinions, but let us know what you think in the comments. But if you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe, support the channel. We always do appreciate shares as well. We are obviously a growing channel, but we're getting closer and closer to monetization. So I really would appreciate those shares as well. But until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.